When I did a video a few days ago talking about Axie Origin leaks, I had no idea we would get major new leaks again so soon. I mean, this is one of the biggest blog posts about Axie Origin that I've ever seen. Ever seen. I've never seen anything like this so far. So let's read this post and let's see what they got going on. Let's see what the big new info is. Holy crap, major Axie Origin info dump. Before I can even start reading, just look at these photos. They look so good. Axie Infinity Origin Battles Version 3 is fast approaching. It will have a brand new interface, game mechanics, art, special effects, storylines, and an expansive onboarding experience. Origin has been built from the ground up to be more approachable for a mainstream audience. The addition of three free starter axes will make it much easier to recruit your friends and family to join our community. Now, they're going to let us know that this is not a finalized announcement. This is more conceptual knowledge, but this is a lot of juicy conceptual knowledge. The goal is to begin the game's release process by the end of quarter one, 2022. However, as we've tried to explain, there are a lot of moving parts involved in this game's release, which might cause delays. Naturally, we want to get Origin out as quickly as we can. So we're hoping to see this thing start to drop end of March, early April. That's what end of Q1 means. But we'll see if that actually happens. Release plan. This is interesting. We will start with an initial alpha launch of Origin, where we plan to make the game available to everybody globally via Mavis Hub and the Android APK on Android phones. During the alpha launch window, we're looking for player feedback to refine the game before the formal release. There will be no SLP or AXS rewards available in Origin during the alpha. It's going to be all gameplay. This is going to really show who's in it for the gameplay, right? Because it's going to be like... If someone's grinding Axie Origin for eight hours a day, it's going to be pretty obvious. You know, it's not just for the money. There's not going to even be any rewards right away. I'm such a freak. I get excited about not having rewards just because it makes it more bulletproof. Like, you only play for the money. Oh, yeah? Anyway, the alpha version won't have any rewards until Season 0 or Season 1 or so, whenever that happens. And it says here, well, hold on. First off, look at the photo. These photos are too big. Look at the photo. We got a victory screen with a, a rank, bear number three. I think everybody wants to see bronze, silver, gold, platinum, something like that. Tiers, a tier system. One of the most requested feature in like any competitive game ever. Ever. And so that photo is kind of cool. Season zero. After the alpha phase, we will launch with season zero, which will allow us to make more core updates to the game based upon feedback. So if there's any major issues during season zero, they can basically do whatever they got to do, like really rework a whole system. Uh, depending on how Alpha goes, we may transition SLP earning from Battles V2 into Origin during the season, at which point Battles V2 will be shut down. This little phrase is huge. Sky Mavis has been hinting at the idea of Axie Infinity Battles V2, the version that we currently play, existing at the same time as V3, but there were a lot of questions around the rewards. After all, we finally are trying to improve the SLP mint burn ratio. SLP has been going up. We don't want to see things go back in the wrong direction. So we have confirmation. Once the alpha is done for Axie Origin, Battles V2 is getting shut down. That makes me feel kind of weird. I've put so much of my heart and soul into Axie B, uh, V2. When it's shut down, I'll never play it again. Never playing it again? All my favorite teams? That makes me feel kind of weird, not going to lie. But I think it's the right move. It just feels weird to think. Am I excited for Axie Origin or am I sad for the end of V2? Uh, now, now I'm not sure. Oh, shit. Now I'm not sure. You will be able to use the axes you own now in Origin. Your axes are a ticket to all future experiences built in the Axie universe. So remember, the axes that you own right now, you still use them. It's the same axes. There's been some confusion about this. So to be super clear, Sky Mavis is not going to start over with new axes. We will have the same axes, the collection that we have put together in the last couple of years, months, whatever, that comes with you. You take that with you into Axie Origin. Your favorite axes, your favorite teams, all your favorite stuff, you're keeping that, and your old friends will be with you for the new adventure. It's one of the most important things. Infinite games, infinite experiences, but you take your axes with you. Those are your axes. That's your axie fam, at least as far as the NFTs are concerned. You have your digital assets, and then you have your actual humans in the guild that you're friends with. And uh, you know what I mean? You take both of those with you. The guild stands together, and then you keep your axes with you along the journey. We aren't just going to start over. All the stuff we did the last few years isn't just going away.
Okay, new game mechanics. Look at this photo. It looks so good. Every time they share a photo, it looks better. Axie Origin is going to be so good. What the heck? Sequential turns. This is a big change, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. In Origin, Axies will now execute their attacks immediately as cards are played. Opposing trainers will take sequential turns using their cards versus choosing them simultaneously at the beginning of a round. So right now, there's a bluffing aspect where I pick my cards, my opponent picks their cards, and then those cards are simultaneously revealed. I actually like that part of Axie. While it can be frustrating, it, it kind of reminds me of poker or I don't know what other games it reminds me of, but I like the simultaneous bluff factor. It reminds me of Pokemon. I used to play the game Temtem quite a bit, a competitive Pokemon-style MMO. The bluffing factor of simultaneous reveal. There's a lot of strategic elements there. I like bluffing. I like a little bit of that. But we're going to have sequential turns. I go, then you go, then I go. More like Hearthstone, less like Pokemon. And that's okay. I'm curious, I'm open to it, but I will admit it catches me by surprise. Trainers will now be, and this is a good thing here, trainers will now be in constant action, either playing their cards or carefully observing their opponent's moves. We believe that this fast-paced new game design is more engaging and provides a greater feel of control over your axes since they spring into action immediately when a card is played. I don't know, I just love the surprise. I love the surprise. It'll be less surprising, but also less frustrating. This is another big one. Reset energy and cards each turn. So unused energy and cards will no longer accumulate across turns. They'll no longer build up across turns by default during battle. So trainers will have less incentive to skip turns and not use up energy. So resting for three turns with your big AFK strat and then double killing my bugs or my fish or whatever. We're not doing that shit anymore. No more. There will be many mechanics around retaining and acquiring energy slash cards that will still provide layers of strategic decision making within the game. In other words, the game's not going to suck. They're still going to make it interesting, but we're not going to build up energy. And now we get to dig into some new cards, new cards. We can't really analyze them yet. We don't know how, what all the effects do, but let's take a look. So Ronin costs one. It's a 40 damage card. Look at this sick artwork. I love the new art so much. The new artwork for these cards is awesome a whole different level it's on a whole different level ronin attack deal 50 percent more damage per energy spent this turn so there's going to be mechanics around trying to build up extra energy but it's going to be more difficult than it used to be because you can't simply rest building up more energy attacking it does appear these cards have either attack or defense but not both so cards are going to be more specialized maybe Tiny Dino. Let's look at the art. It looks like a Godzilla, dude. Look at this. You see its eyeball over here. It's got its tail destroying a lighthouse. This is a Godzilla Axie. A tiny Dino. Looks pretty big to me. A one cost with 60 damage. Another attack type card. Gain 15 damage per turn if retained. If retained. If retained? Retained? So what is retaining? We're going to play cards and then retain them and use them on multiple turns in a row. It looks like there's a max of four turns for this combo of retaining. 15 damage additional. Kind of fits in with the tiny dino idea of getting stronger as the turns go on. Right now, it gets a damage boost on round five and beyond. The new version seems like it's going to need more skill uh, as opposed to just waiting. You're going to have to somehow pull off a retaining combo. So that's interesting. Tiny dino has been owning me so far in season 20. So that's interesting. And then Kaku here is a skill card. So one cost, no damage. One cost, no damage. Look at this art. It just looks so good. It looks so good. And then it's a skill card. It says, target an ally, remove sleep. The next attack of the target this turn it deals 60 more damage. That's interesting because that's a combo. That feels almost like Magic the Gathering. You're targeting an ally, removing sleep, and then the next attack does more. Like, that's a very specific targeting and comboing mechanic. I don't think there's a lot of that in the current game. Right now, there's no mechanics. Like, if you have to heal an ally, those cards always suck. Strawberry, Sweet Party, pretty much unplayable. Uh, 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 uh. What was that one? The Wind... The Blowing Wind, Silent Whisperer. Like, if the Forest Whisperer meta is coming, Forest Spirit, then I'm still waiting for it. So, targeting allies has not been good in the game so far. And it's interesting to think that maybe we're going to have some more complex combos that'll be viable. Get us a little closer to Magic the Gathering style. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I'm in my element right now. I love this. Just looking at new cards and getting excited. We can't even get too sweaty yet. I'm just getting excited. Just my imagination is running wild. The art looks so good. Let's keep going. Let's keep reading. Let's try to keep it together here. I'm so excited. Card changes. For those of you familiar with the V2 Battles experience, most of the cards you know and love have carried over to Origin. 
However, most cards play differently now as they have either an attack or a defense value rather than carrying both. Some cards that you're familiar with have newly described abilities. However, we've tried to keep the spirit of the card as consistent as possible. I've noticed this, like, even if a card does something different, it seems to have the same kind of effect. Kaku is still boosting attack somehow. And it seems like a lot of the other cards do the same thing. So I don't know, like Risky Fish still boosts damage against plants, like stuff like that. Just like the, the basic theme is still there. And they're looking forward to our thoughts as we get familiar with them all. Oh, we will have thoughts. Let's look at some more cards. So this is Robin. Robin is ill-omened, right? It's not a very common card. So Ro Robin, currently it, it adds Jinx, which means you can't get crits. The, the targeted axe, you can't get a crit. It says here, summon a little Robin. It's a little Robin. It's a skill card. So, I don't know what that means. Summon a little Robin? Is this like World of Warcraft Warlock style? Like summoning monsters to assist you? Can I summon an army of Robins and mice and other field animals to help me destroy my opponents? That sounds kind of dope. Now, this art looks so sick. This art looks so sick. Look at this guy. Look at this Harry Potter looking motherfucker. This guy looks amazing. This is wild. It's one cost, telescope, skill, banish. Banish? What does that mean? Put one aquatic card from your draw pile to your hand. Banish. I think that means it doesn't go into the discard pile, maybe? Or I wonder what banish means. We're going to look through our deck and choose a card and put it in our hand. What do you call that? Oh, there's a word for that. Like when Cards that let you look. Tutors. It's from Magic the Gathering. It's a tutor card. We got tutors and Axie now. Cards that let us search the deck. This could get broken as hell. Imagine the smartest players in the game searching their deck, picking their cards, setting up their combos. Skill level 10,000. And the art is so cool. Then we got Buzz. Buzz, look at this disco dancing. This looks like that scene from Ready Player One. Floating and dancing, like the, the male and the female lead. They're on like their little date or whatever. This kind of reminds me of that. Buzz, Buzz. Attack. Deal 25 damage to all enemies. Shuffle one dazed into your opponent's discard pile. This makes me think of Slay the Spire, Days. If you've ever played Slay the Spire, one of the best card games ever, uh, you can get these Dazed debuffs. They get shuffled into your deck. You can't play them, so when you draw them, it's a wasted card. This seems like some sort of similar mechanic. So I guess this is my next path. Instead of discarding my opponent's hand with bugs, maybe now bugs are going to be shuffling Dazes and other things into the deck. I'm still going to play the most annoying teams possible. Look, when you're me and you ramble at chat all stream, you need some nice, strong, annoying team-building mechanics to keep your opponents in check. Yeah, Buzz Buzz looks cool. Buzz Buzz looks cool. Love the art. Love the art for all of these cards. They look so good. They look so good. I'm a very critical guy. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't say it. This stuff genuinely looks amazing. I'm so pumped. Eyes and ears. This is something we're definitely waiting for. There will now be all new cards that relate to Axie's eyes and ears, so the meta combinations have increased significantly. In V2 battles, trainers were able to leverage four of Axie's skills. In Origin, get ready to leverage all six of an Axie's cards. We look forward to seeing trainers discover unique and surprising Axie team compositions. Okay, the drops don't stop. They keep leaking more info. Power-ups, runes, and charms. Look at all these fun-looking little items here. I want to use them. There's a floppy disk. There's a plant. There's some kind of angry-looking mask. There's a rocket. There's an egg. There's a playing card. There's a plant, again, power-ups. Runes and charms are new power-ups we're introducing in Origin. This is huge, guys. They are equipped by your Axes and will provide various buffs. Where runes give new passive powers to Axes, charms are wearables that enhance an Axes' inherent abilities. Wearable items that will adjust Axie powers. This is huge. To craft these power-ups, trainers will need to win off-chain resources called Moon Shards from winning battles. Moon Shards. Runes and charms will be rolled out incrementally, so a little bit at a time. Initially, non-NFT runes and charms can be crafted using moon shards, and over time we will introduce more powerful NFT-based charms and runes, most likely after the alpha window, so a little later in the game. NFT-based charms and runes will require both SLP and moon shards to craft. This will be one of the initial SLP burning mechanisms. SLP burn, SLP burn, SLP burn, let's go. I mean, look at it. It's going to be too big if I scroll in, but actually, no, we can look at this. Let's actually look at these effects. I, I love this. We have no idea how to really understand, but we can still look. Sun Stamp has a three on it. Change ability target to the furthest one? Wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me I could take an attack and change what it targets by using a rune? 
Or a charm? Isn't that gonna be cracked as hell? Oh god, I need to keep making friends with all the best team builders. This is gonna be insane. This is gonna be so complicated. This one's a mystic charm. Silence incense. Attack applies silence for two turns to the frontmost enemy. So we can adjust our attack effects and mix and match. This looks like Paper Mario badges. The Paper Mario badge system has always been one of the best systems in an RPG. For anybody who might not know, Paper Mario badges were basically a bunch of these little items you could equip that gave you different effects and powers. Going back to the original Paper Mario 1 and then in other games as well. It was a really good system. This reminds me just like that. The satisfying collecting and using of different items, but actually strategically interesting. Epic Charm, draw one card. I mean, maybe these are only for PvE. This seems like it would be insane to try to balance. I don't know. I can get lost in that. Let's keep moving. Each season's runes and charms will be removed from gameplay in the subsequent season, which means that trainers will need to continuously be on the hunt to upgrade their Axie. However, depreciated runes and charms can be disenchanted to harvest back resources. The economy sounds like it's going to be much more developed. Enchanting and crafting and disenchanting and uncrafting and getting resources back. There's so much going on here. Moon shards will be reset at the end of each season. Lots of stuff. I'm running low on storage space. I better re finish recording this quickly. Uh oh. And then we got three more cards. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. So Sheba costs two energy. Sheba costs two energy. I was going to say, are we going to have more variety in the energy costs? Right now in Axie Infinity, almost every card costs one. A couple, you know, a handful of cards cost zero. And then one single attack costs two. Sweet party. Most of y'all know. But I know there's probably at least one person watching who's like, what's this, the two-cost card? What's the two-cost card? The two-cost card right now is Sweet Party. There's got to be some people who haven't seen it before. Heal front teammate for 270 HP. If there are no front teammates, heal this Axie instead. 40 shields. It's gotten some play as a meme. AK have played it. Uh, AK has played it. Indez has played it. But it's not actually good. And so I've wondered, will there be more two-cost cards in the game and other vari variable card costs? Well, here we go. 130 damage, 2 energy. Sheba, your team gains 3 rage if this Axie's HP is below 50%. 3 rage. We're going to talk about what rage is pretty soon, but this is interesting. We can see the amount of energy that's mapped to the amount of damage. It appears that one en it appears that one energy is worth about 60 damage, maybe 70 before you think about effects. So to get up to 130, we need to spend extra energy in terms of balance. Confident, one of the most interesting cards in the game, a zero cost mouth card that has some potential but rarely gets played. Right here we see it's still a zero cost, it's a skill type. Target gains two rage, can target any ally. This rage system is going to be very interesting, we're about to explain what it is. It's going to replace the critical hits that currently exist. Instead of criticals, we'll have a rage system. Over here we got imp, imp, and it costs zero energy in fury form. So it costs one energy for 65 damage, costs zero in fury form. Perhaps by adding rage to an Axie's rage meter, you'll be able to unlock fury, and that's going to have synergy with your cards. That seems like what we might be seeing here. So imp would be free to play if you were in fury mode. Interesting idea. Critical hits are no longer the rage, so here's them explaining it a little bit detail here. Trainers playing V2 battles expressed a lot of concern and frustration around critical hits. Oh, you don't say. As this random element often over-influences matches. Yeah, aka determining tournaments and stuff. Final match of a tournament. Oops, there's a crit. The match just got swung. It's, it's a problem. I actually think crits are really fun for casual play and for watching people play. But it is a problem for high-level competitive. That's the weird thing about crits. Good for casual, terrible for high-level competitive. How do you balance that? They've decided to remove random critical hits from Origin gameplay. However, the game will introduce new mechanics like Rage, where Axes will accumulate over the course of a battle. So that's going to be really cool. And this is a huge one right here. They drop in a little thing here. It's huge. Simplified Axie stats. As you can see, Origin is moving towards a strong focus on a fast turn-based design. This, combined with all other additional new mechanics in many ways, makes familiar V2 Axie stats, such as speed, irrelevant. Therefore, in Origin, Axies now simply have hit points. The only stat that an Axie has is hit points. No more speed, no more skill, no more morale. This is a huge change, and it's going to be hard to see how it's going to change the game, like the experience until we get to try it but that's a huge change only hp no more birds are fast plants are slow none of that Whew, this is such a fat post so much info so much knowledge if you're still with me then please like and subscribe leave a comment let me know what you think holy crap all right let's keep reading 
onboarding starter axes so these are our three starters i'm not going to lie it's not perfect for me i don't know this does not hit me like squirtle bulbasaur charmander you know i don't know this to me feels like they're kind of copying the pokemon thing but is it gonna work are people gonna love these starters i'm gonna be honest they look cute they look cute i like them they're fun cartoons they look good i'm not hating i'm not like oh that looks terrible no they look okay they look pretty good I'm not sure if I'm buying the idea that these can play the role of, of Squirtle, Charmander, Bulbasaur, Pikachu. I'm old as fuck, so I'm using Gen 1 references. You know, you could say, what what what, what are the new kids playing today? Piplup? What is that Gen 2, Gen 3? I, I can't. I don't know any of the new Pokemon. I'm sorry. But yeah, I don't know. Starter axes. It's a good idea. I'm just, they're trying to do this, you know, Pokemon 3 starters. Fall in love with the free starter. We'll see. I think what's more important is that these will be free to play. So let's let's read the paragraph. You've already met Bubba. He's one of the numerous starter axes trainers can play the game with for free. They're not NFTs and players cannot earn SLP from using them, at least for now. So free to play is a way to have the fun of the game experience to understand what is the gameplay. But it's not going to let you earn rewards, at least not at the start. Probably the right move. There's a lot to talk about, about free to play and reward systems. That's for a different video. Uh, trainers will be able to earn access to more starter axes as they progress. So you'll unlock additional free axes as sort of a progression uh, incentive. And players will be able to use those axes in PvP, but they're going to be pretty limited options. You want to have a bunch of cool team building, then you got to start buying some NFT based axes and really get your hands dirty. So free to play. People won't need to sign up to scholarships just to try the game. Free to play is going to be amazing. Great for kids. Great for adults who don't want to put money in. Adults who don't want to do a scholarship. People who are curious. Tutorials and unlocks. We know a lot of the dedicated players will have no problem picking up on the new battle system in Origin. However, we want to make sure the Origin is not too overwhelming for your friends and other players as well. Therefore, a successful play of the game will progressively unlock different features in the game. Yeah, they'll, they'll make you unlock stuff as you go. There'll be a plethora of tutorials. And basically, they're excited. Excited to show us Axie Origin, appreciating our patience, working tirelessly to put a high-quality game out for everyone to play. This feels like a game that is relatively close to launch. They're showing us so many graphics, so many different things. The cards look good. The art looks finished. The systems seem developed. It looks so good. It just looks so good. All the little criticisms aside, this thing looks good. There's a lot of other games claiming they've got the best graphics, the best economy, the best this, the best that. All I can say is I think Axie Origin will continue to lead the entire space. And Axie Origin is going to take us to a new era of Lunasia, of Axie dominance, of Axie triumph. I believe in Axie, and I'm so excited, dude. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. There's going to be a lot of amazing blockchain games. Axie is going to be the biggest, best, most influential one, in my opinion. That's all I got. What do you think? Leave me some thoughts in the comments, guys. Axie Infinity Origin is coming. What do you think of these updates? Like and subscribe. I'll see you all in the next video. Flux signing out.